Hey, it's Amanda. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm going to talk about habit tracking today for the fifth day of the 25 Days of Planner Chips. Uh, the paper and pen girl, Tamara McAllister, graciously organized this and is hosting a giveaway as well. So make sure you check out the links below um, in the description box that I'll have for her channel. And then the sixth day tomorrow, you can find a Renee's video on um, the journal Jot and Jive is her channel name, and she's talking about incorporating journaling into planning, which is also something very near and dear to my heart. Uh, today, though, I'm going to talk about habit tracking, and this is going to be more of a conversation about um, what I have done and the pros and cons of the things that I have done. Um, hopefully, it can illuminate some of your preferences and goals that you have for habit tracking. Um, at the end of the day, you're either going to do something or you're not going to do it, so this isn't, this isn't about... Um, motivating you necessarily, but I, I have some ideas about tracking and my experiences that I can share. So we'll just jump in and this is 2016 for me. I'm on a week on two pages and this is from Paper and Cats. Um, I'll link her shop below, but when you have your whole week on the page and you're just doing weekly tracking, it's really easy. For me, it was easiest to track because it's always right there. Um, you're not having to turn a page to find it. Um, I would just draw a simple grid Monday through Sunday and then what I was tracking and if I needed a, do a, a note more than just done or not done, like here A is for AM and P is for PM. Uh, very easy, self-explanatory, easy to see. Um, it's not going anywhere. You don't have to go searching for it. Um, I kept up with this system for a while and I actually shortened it. Um, and looking back in retrospect, I can probably figure out what these um, abbreviations are, but off the top of my head, uh, I know V is for vitamin and then S was for squat, so I was doing a squat challenge. Um, I was 36 weeks pregnant. I highly recommend doing squats <laughs> if you're pregnant. Um, so that was the number of squats I was doing per day. And then a dot just simply means it's done. So that was easy, easy to see. And then I was running out of room personally. So while I love tracking that way, um, I needed to figure out a way to track in this. And this layout is a day on two pages. Uh, I don't want to show you that page. This is probably better. <laughs> this is a day on two pages, also from Paper and Cats. And you don't have that designated place to do weekly tracking um, within this insert. So I was kind of making my own at the beginning. So over here, it's just 1 through 31 for the month of July. And then I would just check off that day um, as I completed it or at the end of the night when I would review things. And then these are things that I want to do once a month. And this was great, but for me, without having a due date for these, I realized that it's not, excuse me, as likely to happen. So that's something that I've changed since I did this. This was my exercise log. I did a lot of exercise <laughs> last July. Um, so yeah, this is nice you get that satisfaction of checking something off and you can see your progress over the course of the month whereas this you know you're just seeing a snippet of a week at a time uh, obviously the con of having this is i had to write all of these out uh, which was tedious yes and then also for me personally if i were to make a mistake it would it would haunt me you know for the rest of the month having to see that maybe tiny error but um, it would bother me so those are the cons of that and then I did continue to do that though for a while. Um, as you can see, I kept up with this day on one page from Paper and Cats. I can't really flip through this one. Um, but then on this side, I would just continue to write that out and check it off as we went. And then still doing divided by section things that I wanna get done once a month. So with this, you have to remember to go back and see what you wanted to get done that day and check it off. So that was September and then moving into December, with those weekly tasks, like I said, or those monthly and weekly tasks, it was hard because some things I wanted to do once a month, some things only need to be done once a week, and I wanted to know when was the last time I did them. So I made this really big spread um, in December 2016, and I've also switched at this point. This is just a dot grid notebook, also from Paper and Cats, um, and I'm just doing a more like f bullet journal style of planning for my daily pages. So I made this, and this section was kind of daily tracking, this was weekly and then it went down into monthly, but there's no clear division. There's no due dates. Again, I had to write it all out, face any mistakes that I made within it for the rest of the month, um, you know, forgot to track. Because again, if it's on a different page, it can be really hard to remember to go back to that page. 
So pros and cons of that one. It's beautiful though. These are from uh, Miura Studio. So a September. Um, this is again just another variation of the same thing. Um, monthly tasks that I wanted to get done broken down by topic and I was adding gratitude in as well and I'm now um, on dot grid but I'm using Tomo River Paper from Paper Penguin Company. And then this is April and I'm still just kind of struggling. I have some things broken down by category to do over the month. I'm only tracking two things by day and obviously I failed. Like that didn't work in terms of tracking. I'm sure that I did these things more um, than I recorded this month, but it wasn't enough for me to come back to that page on a daily basis. Um, so I played with different variations of that and um, as, oh, I didn't bring it up with me. So, oh no, duh, here it is, sorry. So as I moved into like this summer and things like that, and I can't show you any, but um, I was setting up a page every month in my bullet journal that was like cleaning and habit tracking on one side. And then on the flip, I would have my budgeting um, and I decided to whip up some rough inserts in Excel. And this is one of my original things that I created. And this side is just clearly daily tracking. There's some notes on this side. And then weekly, I have it broken down by week. Um, and I just wrote in the week number. These are tasks I want to get done monthly. And then these would be projects. And I think this section I would use for um, annual cleaning that needs to be done within our home. I think that's what I'm going to use it for. But I tried this for October and I actually really loved it. It worked really well for me. So I contacted Taylor at Paper and Cats and she made a custom for me that I've buried. Hang on just a second. I, I'm not a fan of printing and cutting and my layoff was all wrong. I said I made it in Excel so it was kind of rough. Um, but Taylor made this for me and it is November still when I'm recording this. Usually I record and upload that day. Um, but this is a special thing, so <laughs> it is still November. Um, I think this is pretty self-explanatory, and I'm still exploring um, all the ways that I can use this, but I can talk about a little bit these habits that I'm tracking. I think it's okay to track things that you know that you're gonna do and that you're good at doing. I make the bed almost every single day without fail. It's okay to give yourself like a gimme one. Um, vitamins, going outside, not just like running errands, but truly going outside and playing with my kids. For like at least an hour um, is the goal and then eating vegetables like my vegetable intake is horrible so I'm working on that unpacking our bag at the end of the day if we go anywhere prepping for the next day um, sweeping counters and then no dishes in the sink when I go to bed are the things that I'm tracking right now um, this is like I said um, a page that is out of my daily pages since I am doing daily pages bullet journal style on dot grid so I have to make sure that I actually look at this every day. And so far, since I have invested, I think this is why it works for me, I should say. Um, since I have invested the time in creating this and paying for it, <laughs> of course, too, um, it, it's a more solid thing. Whereas when I was making my own and writing my own, it was like this messy page that wasn't really well organized and it wasn't... Um, the same from month to month. It wasn't like a standard page. Whereas this, I can have this standard page. Like I already have December on the back of this. And that's my plan for 2019 is just to have, you know, one of these for each month. And then for me, it will help to have that standard thing. It's not a page that gets lost that I'll never see again. It's a page that's going to stick with me that I can reference, which is great, but it's also going to encourage me to use it properly and completely. Um, I think that's all I need to say about daily. As always, if you have questions, let me know here or on Instagram. Um, and then for weekly, so what I do is I write the week number at the top. And then for me, this kind of flows from Monday to the weekend in terms of tasks. And then the C's and R's, C is for compost and R is for recycling. Um, they alternate here and then trash goes out every week. So that's Tuesday or sorry, Tuesday night. And then that's also when I try to clean out um, the fridge and do the microwave and the exterior stainless. Ideally, I would mop. <laughs> And um, windows, mirrors, bedrooms, and like I said, it just kind of trickles down to succulents and my plants that I take care of on the weekends. And um, circles, for me, that means I intentionally skipped it. And then dots are, dots are I missed it. And then check marks are I did it. For me, it's helpful to put in the dots so it's easier to um, not necessarily count the days that I miss, but just know that like I did miss it and it's time to move on. It's taken care of. There's something in that box. Um, 
This next section is monthly. Um, again, always a work in progress here. <laughs> Um, so these are things that I want to clean or like thoroughly clean, deep clean at least once a month. And for me writing the date, so I know that when I did it, um, it's more motivational to me moving into the next month. And then also as, um, I kind of lost my train of thought, I'm sorry, but moving into December, you know, I'll know that I washed the washing machine at the end of November. So it's not going to be as high on my list as other things would be to get done this month. Like if I don't get to the interiors of the cars. That's something that I would work on um, at the beginning of the month in December. Um, if this seems like a lot of cleaning, by the way, I, just to give you background, I have a one-year-old and a three-year-old and everything in my house is white. <laughs> the cabinets, the doors, um, the trim, the banisters, they, it's all white. So <laughs> it is a little bit more um, upkeep, but the benefit of that is that I know it's clean. It's very easy to tell if it's clean. Um, let's see, this next section is projects. And for me, these are things that I am assigning myself a due date to get them done on. Um, we're having mixed success this month. I have definitely started all of these projects. So when I'm going in here on a daily basis and checking um, that I've done these things or not done these things and following up on cleaning and things like that, um, do I have time to schedule the next task in any of these projects that I have ongoing? So that's been a really great um, visual reminder. And then also the due dates are motivational to me as well. So I think that's a big thing about habit tracking is finding out what's motivational for you and if you're using it as a reminder or as a reward. So for me, this is definitely working more as a reminder, this project section, whereas over here, I would say this would be uh, more of a reward. I know what I need to do every day. It's not so much a reminder. Um, sometimes it is. Sometimes I do need these as reminders, but it's it's more of a reward for me to be able to go in and check all those things off. I hope that uh, made a little sense. And then this section, as I said, I think I'm going to work on um, annual or semi-annual cleaning um, or tasks around the house. It's, like I said, a work in progress. So I'm excited also to see what other people do with this insert. So if you're on Instagram, um, definitely, if you wouldn't mind tagging me or mentioning me in the comments, however that works, um, so I could see how you do it. And I'll be following the paper and cats tags um, as well. And thanks again to Taylor who made these. They are so beautiful. Um, if you have any questions about stickers, these are from the Planner Society a year or two ago. Um, just shoot me a message and let me know. I really think that's all I can contribute to habit tracking. There are so many different stickers and um, ways to do it. A lot of planners even have built in trackers now, which is another great option. It's there. You're going to see it, especially if it's on your day on one page um, type of format. So just trial and error. I mean, I've been trying and making errors for two, three years now in terms of habit tracking and trying to figure out what would work for me. And so far this looks good and we'll see what it looks like going into 2019. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And then just a little housekeeping. I am still reading um, The Bullet Journal Method by Ryder Carroll. I do recommend the book. I got it for my 16-year-old brother um, for Christmas. I'm on page, I think, like 50 or so. I've honestly been watching Outlander, trying to catch up with my mom before I go see her in Missouri so we can watch the new season together. <laughs> so um, that's why I've not been finishing this. It's, it's a wonderful read so far. Um, I just haven't been reading it. I'm really happy with my system right now. So I'm also not as motivated to read it as somebody who maybe was looking to change their system would be. So it's a great read. I do recommend it. Um, thank you also. Nobody sent me any, any mean comments. I've started recording at night because that's when my kids are asleep. So I am using um, some unnatural lamp lighting. Um, so thank you. If that bothers you, thanks for putting up with me. And, um, hopefully, um, we are going out of town here shortly next month, me and the kids, but I plan to share my 2019 setup before we go. Um, I'm staying in my Vanderspeck Nomad that I have customized. It's my wallet too. Um, not much has changed in here. Not much will change. I will have these inserts. And then I also have, um, financial inserts from Paper and Cats from Taylor that she made for me based on my design that I'm going to use. And I'm really looking forward to doing that. And then I also am really excited. Um, I got a Hobonichi Weeks that I'm going to use for homeschool. So again, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. And I hope this was helpful to somebody out there. And go ahead and head on over to a Renee's channel and enjoy her video as well. Thanks and happy holidays.